Today, Cisco Star students will get straight A's. Authentication, authorization, and account management. And Radius just happens to do it all. The Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service, also known as Radius, is a networking protocol that provides these perks to users who connect end user network service. A Radius server is super useful in enhancing security since it authenticates before authorizing a client or user to gain access to the network. In this video, we'll show you how to configure the Radius server on the Cisco CBS350 switch. Next. To start things out, we'll click on Security and choose the Radius client. On this page, we'll first make sure we are in the Advanced Settings. In the Radius table, we'll click the Add button. Here, we will add our server-defined IP address. We can also choose our IP version. In this example, it will be version 4. Next, we'll hop down to the server IP address and enter in our information. Our priority will be 1. Our key string will be user-defined. It can either be encrypted or plain text. For this example, we'll use plain text. The timeout for Relay will be default. Authentication port will be 1812, and the accountant port will be 1813. Our retries and dead time will both be left as default. For the usage, though, we'll choose Login. Click Apply, and then click Apply once more to save the Radius client. Next, we'll go to the Management Access Authentication. On top, we'll select SSH as our application and enable it. We will add the radius and remove local. That's all we have to do here, so we'll click Apply to save. If we wanted to, we could repeat this for a different application. If we wanted the console access authenticated by radius, or if we wanted access to the GUI through radius, we could choose HTTP or HTTPS. We'll make sure that SSH is enabled and then head over to TCP to UDP services. On this page, we can also see that SSH is enabled. Now it's time to configure our switch on the Radius server. Under Radius Clients, we're going to right-click and select New. Here, we can add a friendly name, because we're all friends here, and provide the IP address for the switch. At the bottom, we can either have a manual or a generated shared secret. If we use a manual shared secret, we need to make sure that it is the same one that we described in the switch. Once we've entered it, we'll confirm our shared secret. Once finished, we'll go to the Advanced tab. We'll choose Cisco under our vendor name and click OK. Now we need to find the network policies. Right click and select New. On this page, we'll enter the policy name and leave the rest as default. We'll hit Next to move forward. Under the Specify Conditions section, we'll click on the Add button. In this example, we'll add a Windows group. This is where our authenticated users are located. We'll double-click the Windows group and add groups. Here, we've got to find the Windows user group that was created. We must also add the Radius client we created. To do so, we'll scroll down until we find the client-friendly name. We'll double-click it. The client-friendly name will be the same as the Radius client-friendly name we created earlier. We'll enter in that name and click OK. Next up, we'll click, well, Next. We must make sure that Access Granted is enabled under the Specify Access Permission page. To configure the authentication methods, we must choose the following. MSCHAP v2, MSCHAP, CHAP, and PAP SPAP. After we click Next, we can click No on the pop-up notification. We'll leave the Configure Constraints as default. On the Configure Settings page, we'll click on Standard and remove the frame protocol and the service type. Once those are gone, it's time to add our new service type. We'll scroll down until we find service type. We'll double-click this and choose Others under the attribute value. In the drop-down menu, we'll click Administrative and then OK. We're not out of the woods yet. Once that's finished, we'll double-click on Vendor Specific. We'll click on Add once again. 
Here, we'll scroll down until we find Cisco and double click it. Now we'll click on Add to add the attribute information. Under the attribute value, we'll enter the following value. Once that's entered, we'll click OK and OK again on the next page. We can close out of the next page. Under the new network policy, we'll continue. To complete the new policy, we'll click the Finish button. We're almost done. Now we'll try to SSH into the switch, which now should be authenticated by Radius. On the right side, we're running a packet capture Wireshark so that we can see the traffic coming in. Under the PuTTY configuration, we'll enter in our host name for the SSH connection type and choose Open. Here, we can log in with our username and password. We can now see that we are in the switch and that the traffic came in and was accepted. And that's how it's done. That's how we configure login authentication by Radius on the CBS 350 switch. Thanks for watching Tech Talks from Cisco. We'll see you next time.